the month of January and February, we've been looking at the people of God. And uh, we've, we bless God for how far he's, he's brought us in this series. Our objective hasn't changed. Our goal is that as individuals, as a church, we will know our identity, who we are. And when we get to understand who we are, we will know what God or the responsibility God has assigned to us. Our overall theme as a church globally is a people of God unleashed to transform their world. And before we can go out there to transform our world, we want to have a good understanding of who we are and what has been given to us as our mandate. And like our elder said, last week we look at a people of God as kings and priests. And we said that as kings and priests, God has called us to take dominion. So wherever God has placed you, God has placed you there as his representative to rule, to govern. Hallelujah. Because if you remember in the book of Genesis, when God created man, God said to man, have dominion over the earth. Everything that moves or crawls or flies or in the sea, you are to take dominion. And so man has been given the mandate to rule. And we are praying that in our workplaces, in our schools, we will bring down the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And I remember, if you remember very well, our Pastor Malfu told us at the beginning that God brought his kingdom here. And because man sought for independence, the, the, the representative of God had to go. But when Jesus Christ came, God reintroduced his kingdom. Praise the Lord. So the kingdom of God is with us. The kingdom of God is in us. And it is you and I, our responsibility to enforce the kingdom of God wherever we are. Hallelujah. Not only as kings, we are also priests. And as priests, we offer sacrifice. This morning, I want to speak to you on the topic or the subtopic, the people of God as living stones. The people of God as living stones. And we'll be reading from the book of 1 Peter chapter 2. Uh, we're still in 1 Peter. We've not moved from there yet. Uh, um, we will still dig deep in, in, in that book. It's an amazing book. First Peter chapter 2. We read from verse 4 to verse 8. And today for the first time, I'll be reading from the New Living, the, the New International Version. Hallelujah. Uh, I, I'll be changing my taste a little bit and I'll move away from the NLT to the NIV. First Peter chapter 2, 4 to 8 from the NIV. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him. You also, like living stones, are built, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in, in scripture, it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and a precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Verse 7. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. 8. And a stone that causes people to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they are destined for. Hallelujah. The people of God as living stones. When you start reading 1 Peter chapter 2, Peter begins by encouraging God's people to get rid of certain things in their lives. And he talks about us getting rid of deceit, hypocrisy, jealousy, and all unkind speech. Because as God's people, there is a certain lifestyle that God expects of his people. And when we began, we said that we are the ones God has chosen. We are the ones God has set apart. We are the ones God has redeemed. We are the ones who have a covenant relationship with our God. And we said that God, having released us into the world, is expecting that we will have contact with the world and not be contaminated. And so he is reinforcing that mindset that as you go into the world, ensure that you are getting rid of anything that will make you look like the world. Praise the Lord. Because you are in the world, but you are not of the world. Praise God. We are here, but we don't belong here. 
Scripture says we are citizens of heaven. And as citizens of heaven, there is a lifestyle that is required of us. And he's encouraging us to get rid of all these things. Praise the Lord. But in the verse 4, where we are starting from, he says, as you come to him, as you come to him, the NLT says, you are coming to Christ. But I like the NIV, what, how it puts it, as you come. Meaning that as you are getting rid of all these things, you are making a conscious effort to also approach God. And I get to understand that we approach God in three areas. Number one is when you first believe, you come to Christ. It says, all oh, who come to him, he will not reject them. So when we come, we are coming as an act of faith. And when we come, we profess our faith and our belief in him. And Bible says that by that act of profession, our faith and our belief, we are saved. So Paul Peter will say in Acts chapter 4 that there is no name in heaven and on earth by which a man will be saved except the name of Jesus Christ. And until you confess the name of God as your Lord and personal Savior, salvation is far from you. So when we come, we come unto him for salvation. Praise the Lord. But that is the first act of coming. The second act of coming to Christ is when we gather like this. We gather in worship. We come together to exalt his name. We come together to bless his name like we've done beautifully this morning. And once again, I want to uh, appreciate the music team for the amazing worship. But that is not the end. There is a third way of coming to Christ that unfortunately many of us don't do it. That is coming to him daily. Because the phrase is, as you come. So in my mind, I, I, as a poor English student, I get to understand that this is something you do continuously. You don't do it once and you stop as you come, as you are coming. Then notice says you are coming. So you are always uh, approaching Christ, praise the Lord. And the believer is expected to approach Christ on a daily basis. Don't say I came last year and I gave my life to Christ, that is it. Don't say I came last Sunday or this morning and I've given my, I have offered him my worship. That is it. No, there is a need for you to constantly approach God. There is a need for you to constantly approach Christ. Because the more you draw near to Christ, the more you, you become like him. Praise the Lord. The more you come close to Christ, the more he reveals his mind and his thought unto you. The more you draw nigh to Christ, the more he shows you great and mighty things. Praise the Lord. I, 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 I was talking to a dear sister uh, yesterday and, and we're talking about relationship. And, and we, we, we got to understand that for you to have an intimate or uh, close relationship with somebody, there has to be a constant communication. Praise God. And if there's no constant communication, the, the, the conversation becomes casual. Oh, but when you have an intimate relationship with somebody, the conversation is deep. It's the same with God. The more you draw now to God, the more God shows you a deeper side of him. Beloved, we are his people. And, 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 and it, it, it is the desire of God to reveal to his people his mind. Bible says unto Moses, God did not only show him his deeds, he also showed him his ways. Praise the Lord. But to the people of Israel, God only showed them his deeds. Why? Moses had a deeper relationship with God. Moses had a habit of constantly coming to him. I, I am praying that before you step out as a people of God, who have been unleashed to transform your world, you, you will desire to have an intimate relationship with God. You make it a habit to constantly come to God. Praise the Lord. See, I strongly believe that this is what Peter was saying because in the chapter 1 of 1 Peter, he, he was referencing a group of individuals. And he calls them the elect of God. So he was not talking about new believers or people who don't know God. Peter was speaking to individuals who have believed in God. He says, to God's elect, exiles scattered throughout the province of Asia. So he was speaking to a group of believers. And this morning, I also want to believe in my spirit mind that I'm speaking to a group of individuals who have given their life unto Jesus. And I want to encourage you to make a habit of coming to Christ. Don't just come once. 
Don't just make it a, a casual thing. Don't just make it that, oh, it's Easter. Easter Sunday, I will show up. It, 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 it's, it's 31st night, I will show up. Oh, but on a day-to-day basis, desire to come close to God. Oh, hallelujah. But for whatever reason, if you've not met this Jesus yet, I want to glorify him to you. That this morning you make a decision to come to him. Because all who come to him, he will not reject them. He will receive them. As a matter of fact, he says he is standing at the door of your heart and he is knocking. Hoping that you will open, that he will come in. He will come in. So this morning, if you don't know Christ... If you've not accepted him as your Lord and personal Savior, oh, I want to say that you will make a decision for Jesus. Praise the Lord. But church, let me say this before I move on. We cannot transform our world unless we have been transformed. And the only way we will be transformed is when we come to Christ. The only way we will be changed is when we come to Christ. Oh, he is the one who changes us. Praise God. But now Peter goes on and uses a unique term for Jesus. He says, as you come to him, the living stone. That got me a little bit confused. The last time I checked, there's no stone that is alive. Oh, hallelujah. And this is the only time in scripture Jesus is referred to as the living stone. In other passages in the Old Testament, he is spoken of as the stone or the rock. Praise God. But nowhere did they attach living to him. You know that he is called the living water, the bread of life, and all that. But here Peter is saying, you are the living stone. Now, if you read Isaiah chapter 8, verse 14, and 28, verse 16, and Psalm 118, where Peter references, he says that in the scriptures, he says, I am placing a cornerstone in Jerusalem, chosen for great honor. So there's no mention of living, but he says a cornerstone. He goes on to add that this stone, those who believe in him. So it is not a stone by a person. Oh, hallelujah. Those who believe in him. The last time I checked, stones don't have personal pronouns. So for a personal pronoun to be used for a cornerstone, my understanding is that we're talking about a person. But who is this person is the question perhaps you are asking yourself. This is where Peter comes in and Peter is saying that he is Christ Jesus. The cornerstone we are talking about is Christ Jesus. Now, Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4 that the rock that followed the Israelites and gave them water to drink was not an ordinary rock, but it was Christ himself. Oh, so when we're talking about a living stone, we are talking about Jesus Christ. Who is the fountain of life? Oh, hallelujah. See, for those of us who are in this generation and in this world, the concept of living stone may be strange to us, or a cornerstone may be strange to us. But to the readers of Peter in their days, they understood what a cornerstone is. A.V., can you help me with the image? Now, in the olden days, when a building is being put up, As they lay the foundation, they will put a huge stone at the corner, a vantage point of the building. And upon that stone, as if it is the the structure on which the entire building sits. Praise the Lord. And Peter is saying, in any building of life, in, in, in the church of God, the one who sustains and holds that structure... It's not an ordinary stone by Christ Jesus. In your life, the one who sustains that life, the one who upholds that life, the one who keeps that life intact, is no other person but Christ Jesus. See, when that stone is removed from its place, everything that sits on it crumbles. Praise the Lord. No wonder in Hebrews 1, Bible says that in him all things hold. By his power, he sustains all things. Oh, praise the Lord. Uh, If your life is going to remain intact, if if your future is going to remain strong, if your marriage is going to stand, it has to be built on Christ Jesus, the cornerstone. Oh, hallelujah. When you reject him, you fail. Praise the Lord. And so, I, I, uh, Peter goes on to say that 
He was rejected by men. You see, when Christ Jesus came into our, thank you, Avi, when Christ Jesus came into our world, he, the Bible says he came unto his own, but his own did not receive him not. They rejected him. Oh, but to them who believed, he gave them the right to become the children of God. Peter says they did, they did not receive him because of their unbelief. But those of us who received him, he's a precious stone. Why? Because our lives are held intact. Why? Because our future is secured. We know come what may, our life is built on the solid rock. The cornerstone. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when you read Ephesians chapter 2, 19 to 22, Paul also adds that the church is built on Christ. The church is built on Christ. We'll come there in a moment. And, 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 and our lives is also built on Christ. And, and when we ignore him, we ignore everything. So Paul is underscoring the point that as members of God's household, we are built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Jesus as the cornerstone. Praise the Lord. And I remember in 1 Corinthians 3, Paul saying that he's, there's no foundation no other person can lay except the one that has already been laid, and that is Christ. But why is he saying again that we are built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets? See, the foundation of the apostles and the prophets is the teachings of Christ. Praise the Lord. So all who believe in the teachings of Christ are building their lives on Christ Jesus. I'm speaking on the topic of people of God as living stones. Praise the Lord. And I pray that this morning or throughout the year, you and I will build, will build our lives on Christ. Now, but when you consider a stone, you realize that a stone does not change character. Stones don't just get up one day and say, we've changed our, uh, 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 you did geography, we've changed our, our, our system and, and, and our, 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 what, 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 what's the word, our characteristics. No, stones don't do that. There's a certainty when it, it comes to a stone. Praise the Lord. Stones are also solid and steadfast. Praise the Lord. They are strong and immovable when it comes to principle. They are persistent in purpose and also have the capacity to resist and to sustain. Now, scripture makes you to understand that Jesus, who is God, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so if he's being compared to the, a stone, that means I can rely on him. That means he is dependable. That means I, 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 I can rest my hope in Christ Jesus, knowing that there is a certainty in him. Oh, all other things will change. Oh my God, he doesn't change. But... And I pray that you put your trust in Jesus. That says, you, yes, you who trust in him, recognize the honor God has given him. You recognize that he is precious, a precious stone precious stone. May we rely on Christ. Amen. But interestingly, when you consider the life of Jesus, each time he's attached to any non-living thing, that thing becomes living. Until he said, I am the living water. No, water was not living. But because he said it, I am. Now water has life. When he said, I am the bread of life, now, bread has become a living thing. See, you and I know stones are dead things. Ah, but now he's saying that I am the living stone. And so when you come to him, because he has life in him, he also gives you life. So in John chapter 7, he says to the people, all who believe in him, out of them shall flow rivers of living waters. You had no living water in you. But because you have come to believe in him, guess what? You have become a source of life. Ah, I pray that God will release his life upon you. That as you go into the world to transform the world, you will also change things by the life God has given you. So Paul, Peter says, as you come to him, you will now become living stones. So I can imagine I was a dead stone. That was good for nothing. I was a dead stone that no one had hope in. But the fact that I came to Jesus, 
But the fact that I kept connected to him, he says, I have now become a living stone. So as I go out, I have life in me. And my responsibility as a living stone or one of the stones is that I, 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 I will produce the life God has given in me. Oh, praise the Lord. Church, what I'm saying is that when you come to, when you come to Christ, he impacts his nature into you. Because now you are a living stone. So you have the same morphology or the characteristics of Christ. Who is the, the living stone? Oh, may the beauty of Christ be seen in you. May the nature of Christ be seen in you. Let the world see Jesus in you. Why? Because you have become a living stone. The character of Christ, the nature of Christ must be seen. Praise the Lord. We are living stones. We are living stones. Now, Peter goes on to say that, that as living stones, we are being built up. Being built up. So two things catches my attention. As we come, he builds us. So the more you come to Christ, the more he builds you up. We are being built up, which also a continuous process. So I, 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 it doesn't matter how old you are in Christ. Oh, he's still building you up. Your responsibility is to continue coming to him, that he will build you up. Ephesians says that until we all attain the standard of Christ, the stature of Christ Jesus, or oh, until we get there, he doesn't stop building you up. That is why I'm encouraging you to come to him always. Because there is work that has to be done. I'm not a finished product. I'm still being worked on. I'm work in progress. Because daily he's building me up. Daily he's, he, I'm being built up. Praise the Lord. And you see, if you've ever, you ever been to a building site, when they're working with stones, they tend to work, cut the stones and shape them to fit the structure. He said he's been, we are being built up into a house. And in a house, in a building, not every stone in that building has the same shape or size. So sometimes when you come to Christ, he has to chip some things off you. Some, some of us have to be smoothened so we will we, we, we be the surface of the building smooth. Others will have to be maintain our rough edges so that we will keep the structure in place. So each of us come to Christ and Christ as the master builder determines what he does with us. We don't determine what the builder does. He chooses and determines where you are placed. Praise the Lord. So it, it, as we come to Christ, he builds us up. And he said we are being built into his church, his house. So when Jesus was talking about, I will build my church, he was not talking about building church with uh, 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 um, iron rods and, 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 and uh, dry walls and whatever. He was talking about men, living stones. Oh, praise the Lord. So you are the one God is using to build his church. You are the material God is using to build his church. Oh, praise the Lord. And so you need to avail yourself for him to shape you. You need to allow him for him to mold you. See, the act of cutting off, pruning some of the excesses, it's not, it's not, it's not fun. So sometimes God will take us through certain things to prune us. Oh, may allow yourself for him to prune you, for him to shape you, for, so that he can use you for his purpose. There's a reason why he called you. There's a reason why he chose you. And he said, I've made you a living stone that I'm going to use you to build my house. So we get connected to him, he builds us up. But interestingly, in a building, the stones are connected to each other. So in the church of God, there is interconnectivity. None of the stones is isolated. Oh, praise the Lord. I am connected to him, he is connected to me. Because together, we make the building. Praise the Lord. So don't see, and I think I've said this here before, don't see yourself as an island. You are part of the building. You have a role to play in the building. So get connected. Praise the Lord. Allow God to connect you to somebody. I, I, allow God to plant you into a place, into a ministry. Allow God to, to bring you into the church. See, God could have taken you and I to heaven the day we gave our lives to him. But he chose to keep us here. 
And there's a reason why he's keeping you and I here. So that together he will build his church. Amen. He's building us up. He's building us up. And he's building us into a church. But last week we said that in the church or in the temple, we as priests, we serve. We offer sacrifices. But our ministry, seriously, is not in the church, but it's outside the church. Praise the Lord. So when we come here like this, this is when the building takes place. The shaping takes place. Now he releases us to go into the world to have impact in the world. So the work of the church is really out there. It's in the world. And Paul says that don't you know that your body is now the temple of the Holy Ghost. So together we are the church, but individually we are also the church. So as you step out of this place or out of your house, have the understanding that I am the church. I am representing the church. I am the body of Christ. And there is a reason God has taken me out there to do ministry. And the ministry of the church is to transform the world. The ministry of the church is to bring a change in our world. As we heard a few weeks ago, the ministry of the church is to be the light of this world and shine in the darkness, that the darkness will be dispelled. We cannot have a church and the world is still in darkness. We cannot have a church and the world is still decaying. Oh, praise the Lord. We we cannot have priests in the church and and yet sin is dominating the world. Oh, let the church arise and take its rightful place in society. Let the church arise. I'm not talking about a denomination. I'm talking about you and I. Praise the Lord. I'm not talking about, see, a few days ago, a couple of days ago, I was listening to a a, a message and the person said something interesting. I posted it on my WhatsApp. I said, Pentecost is not a denomination, but an experience every believer needs to have. Praise the Lord. Oh, you need to experience Pentecost. Now, when you experience Pentecost, you step out there with fire. See, read your Bible in Acts chapter 2. When the disciples experienced Pentecost, they went out with fire. They went out with a message. They went out with a purpose. And their sole purpose was to preach Christ unto the people. Praise the Lord. I I pray that you and I will arise and experience Pentecost once again. That the fire of God will fall upon his church. That anything that is dead in the church will become alive. Oh, we are living stones. We are not dead stones. Praise the Lord. You are a living stone. You have life in the inside of you. And you can bring life to the dead world. You have life inside of you. And out of you is flowing a river of living water. That others can come and drink and be saved. You are the reason why God has brought you here. Canada needs you. Your neighborhood needs you. The world needs you and I to bring a change. Praise the Lord. In Romans chapter 8, Bible says creation is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. So as a matter of fact, the world is waiting for you to arise. The world is waiting for you to show forth the power of God in you. When we speak of manifestation, it's about displaying Oh, praise the Lord. And the world is waiting for you to display God's glory in your life as a living stone. Amen. God is building us up and he's connecting us to each other. So you cannot say that you are, I cannot say, let me use myself, that I'm more valuable than you. No, I cannot. I don't even have the right to say that. Because I did not determine where I stand or where I am placed in the building. By the grace of God, some of you are at at the top of the building. You are outside. Everybody sees you. There are some of us who are in the ground, who are part of the structure below. Nobody sees us. Praise the Lord. But each of us, we are very important. So don't look down on the person sitting next to you because they don't hold a microphone. Don't look down on the person sitting next to you because they cannot recite Bible passages. I I pray that we all be able to recite Bible. But if the person is not able to recite just like you, please don't look down on them because God has a plan for their lives. They are playing an important role in the church, in the building. So when Paul was talking about this in in, in in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he, he says that 
the, the, the foot cannot say, I am not the eye. Neither can the arm say, I am not the foot. Each of us are important. And even the path we don't recognize. Oh, they are the most important. Praise the Lord. So the individual you think they are the least, that is the one God is really using in the church. Praise God. You are a living stone. And I also want to tell them, you don't look down on yourself. See, sometimes we have the habit of looking down on ourselves. That, oh, as for me, God cannot use me. Oh, if he can even call stones to rise up and praise him, how much more you, who is a living thing, who he put his breath in the inside of you, he can use you to do great and mighty things in the world if only you avail yourself unto him. Scripture says in the big house, there are articles, various sizes, various types. Oh, but if a man will cleanse himself, if a man will set himself apart, you become useful to the master. Yours is to set yourself apart for his use. Hallelujah. So that he will build you. He will build you into a structure. Let, 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 let me try and wrap up with this. Jesus is said to be the master builder. Okay? Because scripture says, God is building us into his spiritual temple. So the chief builder is God. It's Christ Jesus. But he's also chosen individuals to work through as builders. Because if you read carefully, Isaiah says, the stone the builders rejected. So there are builders. Praise the Lord. There are builders. And Paul also says in 1 Corinthians 3, that by the grace of God, I have become an expert builder. So meaning that Christ worked through men to build individuals praise the lord christ worked through men people he has chosen and has graced them and so in ephesians 4 he said when he ascended he gave gifts unto the church he gave the apostles the pastors the teachers the evangelists and the prophets and their responsibility is to build the church what we call the equipping of the church and so when we come here on a daily basis, as we hear the word of God, it is the equipping process. No wonder in this year, our theme, we are saying, the local church is the equipping center. Praise the Lord. And so I want to encourage you to avail yourself to be equipped by God's people. Not necessarily by elders and pastors, but sometimes in our small group meetings. It is also a way of God equipping us. So when you disassociate yourself from such gatherings, you, 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 what you are saying is that I don't need the equipping process. But we are being built. It's a process. It is not complete. We will only become a finished product in the eschaton when we make it to heaven. Praise the Lord. Oh, but as long as we are here on earth, God is still working on us. So I want to encourage you, church, that allow yourself to be equipped. Allow yourself to be built up for the master's use. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And each time you are built up, glory and honor comes to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Not only are we interconnected as living stones, but because we are connected to Christ, we also share in his triumph or triumphant victory. Bible says in the book of Colossians that God made a public spectacle of the enemy by triumphing over him on the cross. So, as a living stone or as living stones, God has placed us in a place of prominence where we've overcome the enemy. We have, we have triumphed over the enemy. And so in 1 Corinthians 15, 54 to 55, scripture says that death has been swallowed up in victory. But I love the 57 that says the sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. So when you come to Christ, the living stone, he gives you victory over sin. Praise the Lord. So in Romans chapter 6, the Bible says the power of sin is broken. 
As a living stone, sin has no power over you. As a living stone, sin has no control over you. As a, as a people of God, you, you don't succumb to, 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 to the enticings of the world. Oh, praise Jesus. You are a living stone. You are not dead. You are alive. So you can say no to sin. Oh, as we go out there, uh, may we overcome sin in the name of Jesus. That sin will not have dominion over you. But you can conquer every sin that the enemy throws at you. It's in three basic areas. The last of the eyes, the last of the flesh, and the pride of life. That is his basic trick. And, and, and he thought, just as he overcame Adam, he can overcome the second Adam. Oh, but our Lord Jesus Christ overcame him. Praise the Lord. And he has given you that same power, that same authority. As you come to him, he gives you victory in Jesus' name. We are also, as living stones, have our security in Christ Jesus. We have our security in Christ Jesus. Lastly, Bible says that as he was rejected by men, he was chosen by God and he was precious to God. So if I come to him, what that tells me that I'm also precious in the eyes of God. I'm not an ordinary person. Guess what? He is the living stone and have become also a living stone. So as God treats Christ Jesus, oh, God also looks at me the same way. Praise the Lord. So turn to your neighbor and tell him or her, I am precious in the eyes of God. Oh, people have rejected me. Ah, but God has chosen me. And I am precious in his eyes. Hallelujah. You are precious unto God as a living stone. Amen. Church, we are the people of God. We are alive by coming to Christ. We are no longer dead. We are alive in Christ Jesus. And we are being built up into his spiritual home. A place where Christ dwells. A place where God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit have made their home. And I pray that you continue to come to him. I pray that you allow him to shape you. I pray that you allow him to use you to build his church for his glory. Amen. Shall we be on our feet? And if you know the song, I invite you to sing it along with me. To be like Jesus, to be like Jesus. All I ask is to be like him. All through life's journey, from earth to glory, all I ask is to be like him. To be like Jesus, to be like Jesus, all I ask is to be like Him. All through life's journey, from earth to glory, all I ask is to be like him, to be like Jesus, to be like Jesus, to be like Jesus. All I ask is to be like him. All through life's journey, from earth to glory, all I ask is to be like. This morning you are praying that God, I want to be like you. Bible says as we come to him, the living stone, we also like living stones are being built up. We are praying that Lord, may I have the nature of Christ in me. I want to be like Jesus. I want to have his character. I want to demonstrate his nature wherever I find myself. Why don't you lift up your voice and begin to pray? You are praying that Lord, the God of heaven, 
will mold you and shape you like Jesus. The God of heaven will cause you to have the nature and the character of Christ. You are praying that Jesus, help me to be like you. In this life's journey, in, 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 in this year, in this week, as I journey through this life, oh God, may the beauty of Christ be seen in me. Let the glory of Christ be seen in me. Let the character of Christ be seen in me. I desire to be more and more like you. I desire to be more and more like you. I want the world to see Jesus in me. As I go out there, oh Lord, as you have called me and you are building me up into a temple, a holy temple, I am praying that, Lord, your presence will be seen, that your character will be seen, your nature will be seen, your goodness will be seen, that I will demonstrate you to the world. I will display your glory to the world. I will display your character to the world. In the name of Jesus, you are praying and asking God, shape me and mold me. If there is any weak thing in me, Lord, I pray that, Lord, you prune me. Lord, you are the one who is doing the building. You are the one who is doing the shaping. And it is my prayer that, Lord, you shape me. It is my prayer that, Lord, you mold me. It is my prayer that, Lord, you mold me. Mold me, O oh God, into that vessel that you can use. Mold me, O oh God, into that instrument you can use. Lord, in the building of your church. Lord, in the building of your church. In this year, as you are unleashing us into the world to transform the world, I am praying that I will be transformed. The only way, God, I will be transformed is when I draw now to you. Is when I draw closer and closer to you. So I pray that, Lord, you will draw me close to you. Lord, you will draw me close to you. Draw me to your side. Draw me to your side. That, Lord, you will shape me. Draw me to your side. That, God, you will mold me. Draw me to your side. That, God, you will equip me. In the name of Jesus, let somebody pray. You are praying for yourself. And you are asking God that he will draw you. You want to come closer to him. You want to come closer to him on a daily basis. It is by that act of drawing now to him. That is when you are shaped up. In the name of Jesus, let somebody pray. And asking the Lord God, change me, mold me, equip me, use me for your glory in the name of Jesus use me for your glory in the name of Jesus I want to be like you 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 that is your heart desire that is your prayer this morning ah you are desiring to be like Jesus you are desiring to be like Jesus that his beauty will be seen in you that his glory will be seen in you in the name of Jesus that the world will see and the world will know that you have been with Jesus the world will see and the world will understand that you have been transformed that the world will see and the world will know that you have been equipped the world will see and the world will know that Christ has built you up that you are his temple that you are his temple in the name of Jesus you are praying I want to be like you Jesus I want to be like you Jesus this is the cry of my heart this is my heart desire Lord I want to be like you Lord I want to be like you I desire to be like you in the name of Jesus lay maru sabanda diende kiron didi behind the in the Ramaru Sandele, Kaporian Day, Kaporian Day, Limaru Sandala Bakaba. I want to be like you, Lord. I want to be like you, Lord. In Jesus' name. I want to be like you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Mold me, Lord. Mold me, Lord. Change me, Lord. Equip me, Lord. Empower me, Lord. I need fresh oil, fresh fire, fresh grace. If I'm going to demonstrate your nature, if I'm going to show forth your glory, God, I need fresh fire. In this year, all through this life journey, ah, let the Spirit of the living God fall afresh on us. In Jesus' name, we are praying, oh Lord, our God, ah, build interconnectivity in your church. 
connect us, O oh Lord, that you, you to, together you will use us for your glory in this world as we transform the world. We will do it together. We will do it together. We will do it together as a people who have been called by your name, a people who have been chosen, a people who have been redeemed in the name of Jesus. Makabari Ande, in Jesus' name. Oh 